Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching Top Story Current Affair with Dr. Bernard Malik and Professor Pittman. This is our weekly show, and today is Monday, 5th of July. It is 4:32, and today top stories of this week. We are going to discuss today with our analyst, Dr. Bernard Malik and Professor Pittman, that which vaccine is the best vaccine, and does vaccine has any kind of politics from the state and federal government? Does Pfizer is enough, AstraZeneca is enough, or Madrona, which is the best vaccine we have? This is our part one. And second part, we are going to discuss about that what is the fourth stage COVID management plan, which is announced by the uh, Prime Minister, and does this management plan is enough for Australia to keep safe, healthy, and working in environment. Let's start today's show. I would like to thank Dr. Bernard Malik. Who's the Dr. Bernard Malik? He is basically, uh, let me allow to say that TV Asia is the only TV channel from community in Australia, in Brisbane, in Queensland, who's trying to create awareness among the people, trying to uh, uh, work on the ground level where people can understand that what is basic need. And I don't mind to say that one, that Dr. Bandar Malik is basically pioneer of this idea. And that's why I always find him uh, that he's very understandable and very flexible and very cooperative for when it's coming uh, anything about the community services. And I have another uh, community hero, uh, uh, Professor Pittman. He's absolutely uh, uh, every time very gentle character, very supporting man and very straight state forward whatever he say he believe it's a, you like or you dislike he always say whatever he feel that it is the best so i i like to equally thanks to both of you and i like to go straight to pioneer of our show pioneer of this concept pioneer of these kind of platform dr bernard malik dr bernard malik sir uh covid has created a lot of financial and social problems but nowadays it's become more political issue also and if you remember the last two weeks uh, the press conference from uh, honorable prime uh, premier and then scott morrison and then uh, from media side also they try to catch a lot of words from the chief health uh, uh, many, uh, 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 chief health officer and plus prime minister uh, premier also that maybe uh, something came out from the uh, from them which may generate some kind of conspiracy theory what do you think about that pfizer is not available astrazonic has uh, issue with the with the with the clotting and people are in a in a panic situation thank you mr zaidi i think this is a very relevant topic and when you use the politics of covid i think professor pitman in his last program mentioned it clearly about politics of uh, health or politics of covid covid right from the start has become a political issue um, you know it started in china china didn't want its name in order to it president trump was hitting it hard against china and in that politics he lost his election uh, over in queensland uh, everyone believes uh, premier won re-election only because she kept the state very safe that also is called politics of uh, po politics of uh, covid if you consider all that uh, when it comes to what happens in politics one week is too much i think that's what has happened again with covid last week if you see um, this country is going to get into election mode and that is why everybody in Queensland was fighting with the, what Prime Minister said. And then more politics came as to the four phases, the four stages that uh, federal government is trying to implement. Um, liberal Premier of New South Wales deferred the way we wanted to liberalize the country, open it up. But on the other hand, a Queensland Prime uh, Premier was very strong in support of Prime Minister Stage 4. So there is a lot of politics being played. And that in, in Australia, it is also because Prime Minister came up with this national cabinet idea and elevated all these premiers as equals. Now they're beginning to say whatever we say should be listened. 
and prime minister doesn't have much say in terms of uh, decisions he wants to do, uh, make uh, if you remember there was a case of a little girl uh, trying to come here because her father was not well he was uh, at deathbed and prime minister had intervened and even then he could not get this girl to queensland because queensland premier had gone uh, on record to say that no 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 we won't allow so that was most people came out and said that was very un australia like but that again is politics of covid that you are trying to show that you have kept the state safe uh, when it comes to politics of covid i remember when prime minister went on the air and said people who are coming from india would not be allowed in and if they try to be smart and breach that policy they will get 5 years of jail and 66000 dollars fine and there was a lot of politics that got played at that time labor was saying no 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 that's not right you should let it come so that was again politics of covid so politics of covid is pretty uh, a good game that is being played now there was an article uh, last week that said that premiers are trying to keep their jobs safe and not people safe that again is politics of covid so you can look at many angles how you want to play this politics of uh, covid Malik sir, as you already know, that uh, from the federal ma management as well as the state management, they already accepted the Pfizer is not available, and there will there is a shortage of the Pfizer. Now, if, they, if this is the case, and then uh, health officer also accepted that they recommend the Pfizer to be used because AstraZeneca is not yet confirmed. So one the one the one vaccine which is uh, recommended is not available. and the one which is available it does not have uh, you know confidence of the people in this situation being an analyst what do you like to advise to the people it's really uh, up to everyone what they want to do of course in in all cases the likelihood of uh, blood clotting is very very low and that can happen for number of reasons the precondition of the person uh the exposure of the vaccine the the bottle itself to sometimes unhealthy temperatures uh, as you know i come from india in india you find lot of cases uh, in which people have blood clot or people are dying after the vaccine's reaction though government has come out and certified only few deaths but there are hundreds of people dying that uh, directly cannot be attributed to vaccine it is also the way the vaccine is has traveled if vaccine has come out of hospital has been exposed to unhealthy temperatures if the vaccine while while being dispensed was not properly dispensed so there are number of factors that go in yes everybody wants to say something and then you know try to get credit for it months from now look i i, I told you this you didn't listen to me that this is what's happening most of these politicians are not doctors hardly any politician that is doctor and so no matter what they say sometimes is colored uh, in terms of their own personal knowledge and judgment and lot of times they come out and say we rely upon even prime minister when he made the statement yesterday he said it very clearly that uh, the phase 1 and 2 will not be public opinion but it will be decided by the experts and scientists they try to piggy bank their agenda on scientists and experts but at times it doesn't work right right uh, professor pitman uh, dr bernard uh, mentioned about that okay it depends on the people that they have to decide there are a difference uh, 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 you know taking time okay for pfizer they say within two weeks time you can have the your second dose however for astrazeneca you should wait for one month this is another issue and plus the availability plus the aging group 
so that the covid vaccine and and on on the on the second part i will also come back to you and i'll see i'll i'll share some numbers that how the covid vaccine is going on which because it that's related to our second part do you think that in this case people cannot decide by themselves however the honorable premier they, she advised in the last uh, conference that it is based on the uh, uh, their health uh, practitioner gp whatever she he or she advised that will be the best advice for every, every individual so it means the state is free from everything uh i think one of the sad um, problems or indictments with this whole debate is how the doctors and the media have treated it uh, if i go to a doctor for some surgery he tells me what uh, the issues are what the possibilities and risks are with the surgery and i've got to make a decision whether or not i go ahead with surgery Right. I think one of the issues here is I think the doctors don't want to be responsible in some cases for um, the process. I'm also aware that doctors also are the group who'll prop make the most amount of money out of this whole affair. In any uh, situation, someone makes money, <laughs> and the the doctors. Uh, are probably not making the money they would like, and I now understand more doctors are given the opportunity to um, give the vaccinations out. If you go to a doctor, you've got to pay the fee plus the vaccination fee that the government is free. Uh, if you go to a clinic, you just get the nurse and you get the flat um, rate of vaccination costs. So I think the doctors were hanging out for money, and I'm being uh, probably a bit pragmatic with the doctors here, but they always like to make money. They also worry about their own insurances. Well, all doctors are insured. Um, they're worried about if the premium goes up. Um, the reality is that's a doctor's life. That's what uh, they study all those years, and that's the prices they pay and let's not forget doctors get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year whereas you and I would be lucky to make a hundred thousand in a year so uh, they're playing uh, politics in their own sphere of activity and then they also are happy the Australian Medical Association to give advice to the media and of course they have their own political agenda as an organisation. Plus, they're also connected to political parties. So there's wheels within wheels within wheels in the whole vaccination area. And then you've got the pharmaceutical industry. I wonder how much Pfizer will make out of it and their executives. Uh, they certainly won't be going home um, living in... Uh, in a, a, a basic suburb, they'll be doing very well out of the whole thing. And um, I sometimes wonder if, if really, if people were really caring about each other, um, they'd take more consideration and compassion. And as for which one works and doesn't work, um, the issue is um, uh, Pfizer is just not readily available in Australia, but AstraZeneca. And um, the doctors can certainly give you advice. And I think they've got enough information now to tell you whether or not the AstraZeneca will cause your problems. They know that people on respiratory problems and heart problems uh, have difficulties with it. So surely there must be mechanisms now where they can give you the appropriate advice as to which vaccination. Um, these are highly paid people, highly skilled, spend many years at university and um, they, they should be able to handle it. And as for the government doctors, again, I think they've become politicised. They, they're now being more supportive of what the politician wants than their original oath of office, which was to... Uh, help um, people in need and, and humanity in general.
Uh, you have mentioned uh, about the responsibility. Do we think who's who's responsible basically? Uh, let me let me give you four options. You have four options, and uh, number one, uh, ultimately the state, uh, the government office. Second one, the health officer, the public, or the media. So because this becomes a, a dilemma now. So who you think who is exactly directly responsible because media is trying to get something where they can see and as you already mentioned that they are connected with the different parties also uh, this is normal for every country. So who is directly responsible these out of four uh, different stakeholders? It's a shame the media aren't um, legally liable for some of their advice. Uh, certainly the doctors worry and they're worried about being taken to court and certainly the government and they'll be advised by legal advisors as to any possible uh, civil litigation to flow from this. But you rarely ever see the media held accountable for some of their advice on TV. Um, they claim that it's a free society and a free democracy, um, but sometimes they should also be held accountable for their uh, decisions and advice to the public when they know that really all they're doing is creating a crisis out of a crisis. And uh, why are they doing that? Basically for money. So um, it's a shame they weren't more accountable for their decisions. I think the government has a legal obligation. The Acts of Parliament say that they must be held accountable for it and of course there's uh, legal litigation could flow both to the private doctors and to the health department so they will be wary about what advice and you'll probably find if you were to deal with bureaucrats there'll be about a dozen lawyers sitting behind them advising them as to what to say what not to say and uh, and about implications if they get it wrong and the doctors, I think, also want the same protection. But I sometimes wonder if the media uh, should be held a bit more accountable for what they do as well. Right, right, right. So I think uh, it's it's getting clear, but uh, I don't know for the public, does it get clear? Dr. Bernard Malik, one scenario, four situation. We saw everyone see last week that what happened in the in the media. So, and uh, Professor Pittman rightly mentioned that everyone has a lawyer's team of the lawyer at the background. Okay, from the media, some some tough question has been raised to the chief health officer. Then she's a health officer uh, transfer that issue towards the uh, premier, honourable premier. Premier has transferred this issue to the uh, Prime Minister and everyone see. And then Prime Minister also says that, okay, it's going to be decided by the health team. Then only the things will take place. So do you think, and everyone has the team of the lawyer from there. In Australia, it's very easy to, uh, you know, make accountable everyone if somebody takes the decision. At the one end, you are afraid of the getting sued or getting penalized either politically or you know and on the other end you have to take the decision to save the public what do you think what is the best thing to be done at this stage i think the best thing to do is quickly vaccinate everybody and move on and open the country i just want to give you some of the figures that are going around right 31 percent of over 16 years old have been vaccinated and please figure this out. There are only 25 million people in this country, right? right? Any given day, uh, that many people are standing in, in row uh, in one of the states in India for vaccine, right? India um, created a record uh, last week, 8.7 million people vaccinated in one day. In one day. We yeah, we started vaccinating here on 21st of February. That's when the Prime Minister took his first shot. And to this day, we have vaccinated only 7 million people. And the interesting figures are only 1.9 million, that is 9% are fully vaccinated. The rest all have received only one dose. Wonder. These figures are startling. You can, you can you know, close the country and say it is safe, that is not how a country should be run. Yesterday, I was reading an article that said that one of the chefs was offered a job in uh, Queensland, in uh, Sunshine Coast, I guess. 
at two hundred thousand dollars a year. That shows how desperate we are for labor. And you want to keep this country shut? Slowly, you will see how economy goes by. And uh, interesting figures are, you know, uh, there is a saying in English: a ship is safe in harbor, but that is not what a ship is built for. Nineteen sixteens uh, figures were that every third, I guess, every third or every second Australian was. Either foreign-born or their partner was foreign-born. Right. How can you lock this country away and pretend nothing? There is no relation yeah. with the rest of the world. So I think we need to open up the country, vaccinate everyone. Get, let's get the country back to normal. You know, first one year we gave a lot of money and we we felt oh everything is fine, economy is doing fine. You know, government pumping the money is great, so that avoided you know a lot of social evils. Um, crime stayed down. If you remember during the one year, uh, and especially during the lockdowns, they shut down the liquor stores, the bottle shops were shut down because that was giving rise to violence. So somewhere we need to get a, get our act together, stop fighting. Oh, this premier doesn't like that. That premier doesn't like that. Um, I wrote on the Facebook of uh, our treasurer yesterday, he wrote, oh, we've done such a great job. And I wrote him that, please consider supporting small businesses. When all of a sudden government declares, oh, we are going to have three days lockdown and we'll make it four days lockdown. Think about the small businesses that are trying to survive by themselves. T take an example of a restaurant that is anticipating a big holiday weekends and buy stuff for $1,500 or $2,000. And then all of them. Yeah. And children, all of them. No. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's not fun. You know, these people need to act responsibly. They've been elected to act responsibly. And keeping us safe is part of their job. But is there another way to keep it safe? The other way of keeping safe or more productive way of keeping safe is let's get everybody vaccinated. And then we are safe. So I'm sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Down yes, the discussion yes. will be discussing the four phase plan. But yes. in my opinion, the best thing is don't worry about what uh, uh, Dr. Young says. Don't worry about what Dr. Kelly says, the federal uh, um, chief health officer. Worry about what you, I say. Worry about what you say. Worry about what Dr. Pittman says. Dr. Pittman and we are into business where we have not received any money. And our business is totally dependent on borders being opening because we are into uh, international education. We don't want any handouts from the government. All we want is our legitimate um, mechanism where we can invite students. We, we, we contribute very positively to the government, to the economy of this country. So this country needs to own up its own responsibility and extend us the, the courtesy that we require. Professor Pittman, Dr. Bernard Malik has mentioned the number, and that number says that, uh, you know, uh, as a product base, that India, uh, you know, uh, there's no comparison with India and Australia, but India has done one day vaccine, which is from February till today, not yet done by us. And again, uh, if we are talking about the two, 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 set, two set of vaccines. So, do you think that uh, uh, I would like from you to explain to our viewers what exactly the four stage plan? and what we are expecting from this one yes we know that it is related to the covid vaccine vaccination and everything there so uh, do you have any idea that exactly what is the roadmap and how we are going to come to that four 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 stage plan uh, I, I heard the Prime Minister put out a, a four-phase program yeah. and uh, the first one was um, uh, the one we're already in and we're, we're doing that. Yeah. But from a personal point of view, I, yeah. I, I, uh, I've got quite a few children and grandchildren and uh, relatives and um, and they age from 92 down to uh, a nine-month-old baby. 
And when I listen to my children and grandchildren talk about uh, we're already in this and the plan is to, to get vaccinated, um, we're getting a sense from my own children that there's a fear out there about the, the information that's being passed around. You know, should I get Pfizer or should I get AstraZeneca or should I wait and see what happens? That's a fear. People, people need to be uh, given a bit of faith in what's going on, not fear. Then there's uh, frustration. Uh, Professor Pittman, uh, sorry to uh, interrupt you. Who's going to give the faith? Who's going to give this confidence and faith? Well, faith should come from the leaders, a belief that things will will turn out. Uh, and that's the role of leadership, not, not about causing fear. The second one is frustration. I think a lot of people are very frustrated at the moment and uh, they're very annoyed that one day they're out doing their normal life and the next day they're at home with masks on. Uh, that's a very frustrating arrangement. Uh, I couldn't go to church on Sunday, uh, and yet I've been going to church for the last six months. Uh, I couldn't um, go and go to work because uh, they closed everything down, and yet for the last six months I was going to work. I'm vaccinated, um, and uh, I think the last thing is my children have gone into what I call passivity. What that means is they're sitting back passively waiting and waiting and waiting until somebody can say with a confidence that everything's going to work out. So none of my children, none of my grandchildren and most of my relatives are not vaccinated. So um, I think that goes along with what Dr Bernard was saying that only a small percentage. Why has India got it? Perhaps because there hasn't been that fear created and there's not the frustration. It, it's get out and get it done. But here in Australia, uh, we've got to a point, I think, where Australians don't trust the advice being given to them. And now uh, they're just going to sit back and wait. Um, so I'm not sure if the phases will work Effectively, if you notice, there's no time frames to all the phases. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it's open ended, so it can be tomorrow or six years' time. But I'm just saying, uh, I, I just think, from just from a father and a grandfather's point of view, um, there, there's no confidence, there's no faith in what's going on, and the leadership, both at state and federal, have failed to. Um, support the people to get the right decisions to get it done. Right. I, will, I will get back to you. Dr. Manar Malik, hey, Mr. Pittman shared only first phase of the plan and i like uh, you to have uh, some some light on the all four stages of the plan. I know there is a no time limit, but for our viewers, we would still like to say, okay, how the plan, because this is one the, the best part is when I heard the plan, I find it out that there is a something which tells the people, yes, something is happening. We are thinking about you. We have a, a system in place. But uh, once you finish this one, then I have a difficult question for you. Sir, what is exactly this four-phase four, four plan? Um, and Professor Pittman explained it very well, but I just want to say something in defense of the government. I think people are not very willing to go and get vaccinated what uh, Professor Pittman said. Maybe Why? it's because of, the, because of the lack of confidence, but vaccination is available. A lot of my friends who called in, went in and got it. Okay, now we talk about phase four. <laughs> I think the government needs to push it. They can't make it mandatory. I have a budding lawyer at home. My wife is studying to be a lawyer. I was asking, I said, government should make it, make it mandatory. And she said, no, no, that's unconstitutional. You can't do that. But then there's not much you can do before your wife. So I said, okay, fine, that's fine. We could. But I think the government pushes people, encourages them, gets community leaders like you and everyone that is involved to ask people to come out and get it. I think that that phase can be achieved much faster. Uh, about phase four is very interesting thing. As uh, you said, and Professor Pittman said, there is no time frame. 
the when phase one will end and when the phase two will start. It's like, you know, when we were growing up, our dad would tell us, when you get older, I'll buy you a bike. He yes. wouldn't tell when you get 15 or 16, he'll tell when you get older. Absolutely. So, this is the kind of story here, handing out lollipops. Okay, phase one that we are going through is not the same phase. I think where the, the phase ones, the most critical element that has come in this is slashing the international arrival to 50%. Yes. So, so the current numbers that are already coming would be slashed to 50%. That came out as, as a rude shock to a lot of people. And the, the outcome of that was, um, I'll give you one example of that one. The flights from London to Sydney came out to be $38,000 after Prime what? Minister made the announcement. Why, why Malik Sahib? What is the reason behind this? Why? Because people want to get home. Prime Minister said by 15th of July, we'll, we'll start slashing the arrivals to 50%. And oh. then all of a sudden, people want to get home. They're not enough flights. And consider this is one way ticket, $38,000. You can see how desperate people are to get home. And it's, it's from England. It is not from India or Pakistan or Bangladesh where you think there is a greater fear. In terms of facilities, England is no different than, yeah. than Australia. Absolutely. But yeah. home is home. People want to get home. And I think government needs to understand that fact very clearly. It's easy when you're in power, you make a statement and it becomes a law. Prime Minister needs to understand that you, you're making a law. Please be considerate. There are, there are humans involved. There are lives involved. There are so many children that are stuck overseas, can't get home. Anyway, I think that was the most rude announcement Prime Minister made that will cut down to 50% and a lot of lives are affected. And then what they were trying to do was they will also experiment with other forms of quarantine. Yes. And the other forms of quarantine is that's happening in phase one is maybe keeping people home. And if people are already vaccinated, they will not be uh, quarantined in the hotel. They would be experiment would be a pilot program would be run to ask them to quarantine at home. And, and then... Days, and days will be less also. There will be two weeks in place of two weeks. There will be on one week. Seven, seven days. Seven days. It will be seven days home quarantine. Uh, also, the interesting part is that, you know, um, you hear, and I'm sure you and me would hear different stories as Professor Pittman is. We hear stories from back home that people made up this certificate of uh, vaccination. Okay. Right. Uh, God's honest truth is things happen and people do it here. That is why we have jails here and that is why we have judges here and that's why we have police uh, that Professor Pittman retired from because people are naughty everywhere. So what, what government is trying to do is develop a digital way of verification of a vaccine. I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, Professor Pittman and me both submitted a letter to federal government through um, Mr. Ross Vasta, our MP, and we made the same thing. Get um, Australian government's officials from embassy or the high commissioner to verify that these people have been vaccinated and fly them in. That's phase one. And then you go into phase two, again, uh, as Professor Pittman mentioned, and you conquered that, that there is no time frame how long it will take for us to reach from phase one to phase two. But at least we have a we have a time frame. As I, as I said, when you go grow older, we'll buy a bike. So we do not know when that would happen. In phase two, um, they will ease um, the border restrictions and then raise the inbound numbers. The people that are coming inbound, the numbers would be raised. Now, because there is no time frame, you do not know from when. Um, from 15th of July until which date are the numbers half, right. right? So we have to figure out when. So I guess possible phase two arrival would be after people have been vaccinated and numbers have been brought to normal. So all, and then all, all, everyone vaccinated, then uh, just phase two will start. No, not sure, not sure. That is not very clear. But then uh, again, 
um, they will raise an uh, inborn numbers higher. And the, the third uh, fact that comes out is really interesting for you, me, and people who are either connected with the, with the borders or are connected with international education. And please mark this word, capped entry for students and economic visa holders. So they won't open it completely, even though students would be vaccinated, would be capped, maybe. And a capped is very ambiguous word that politicians use when they don't want to give the right answer. Capped. Why can't you tell what would be the cap? Australia takes in 250,000 students every year. Right? Last year, nothing has come. This year, so far, nothing has come. And phase two, whenever it happens, and I'm sure it will happen before Jesus comes, again, it will be capped entry. So you can say goodbye to international education. <laughs> Anyway, four, new quarantine arrangement for vaccinated travelers, which is very, very interesting. We already have quarantine arrangements. I'm sure federal government is trying to make few more um, facilities available. So, and the third one would be, which is really, really interesting. They will start implementing or preparing a vaccine booster program. Vaccine booster program basically means if you have been vaccinated, it's probably worn out now. So they will start vaccinating. Yeah, they will start giving boosters to everyone, which I think is very honorable. That's what I was telling uh, one of my friends just walked in to see me, Professor uh, Deepu Sebastian, and he had mask over it. He was fully covered. And I, saw, I thought, oh gosh, you've been vaccinated. You should walk around, around like the king. I said, it's yeah. people like us who, who haven't taken the vaccine, who are not brave enough, who should be taking the, all these precautions. Said, no, 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 we have to do all that. Anyway, um, in phase three, um, no lockdowns. That is interesting part. But that doesn't make much difference for uh, people living in Queensland. We've been lucky. Uh, we have not had many lockdowns. I think we had three lockdowns and that too for first one was two weeks and second one was three days. And then the last one happened to be three or four days, depending on which city you lived in. And again, vaccine booster underway, uh, exempting vaccinated people from all domestic restrictions. People who are vaccinated could have party of thousand people, no problem. And then the the best part would be, and that is phase three, abolishing caps on returning overseas travelers. That means we'll open the country completely. I don't know if that that's what it means, or they just mean to say that like students and people who have been granted visa can come in. Can come in. Uh, yes. Uh, opening the country means anybody can come in. Uh, students would have a long-term visa. Um, parents, returning parents, and all with family ties would be different. Allow, and then this is what I think we all looking for. Allowing phase three, allowing the vaccinated travelers to go out of the country. So uh, that is the time when people start to go. That is the time. And, yes. and in phase four, in phase four, phase four, we will get there slowly. <laughs> Let me finish. And widening travel bubbles to more regions. So it's not completely open, I guess. If they are all they're trying to do is widening the travel bubbles. Currently, we have travel bubble with the New Zealand, and that to the day we have two cases, they they suspend it. Thank you. Yes, and I think the next country would be Singapore. And then the final phase, phase four will be back. Yes. Yes, uh, Malik Sam. Yeah, there was echo. Yeah. So, uh, what is the phase four? Phase four would be back to normal. Back to normal. But they say they will reevaluate re the situation and then make a. Uh, recommendation and uh, something like that, or uh, this is just back to normal? Uh, if I may say, when it comes to COVID and China, nothing is permanent. By then, as yeah. President Biden said, uh -huh. uh, because China is so secretive, we need to have a more transparent uh, investigation of COVID-19. And that is because uh, President Biden, whom I consider to be a statesman, a great, a great gentleman, thinks that China is probably producing another another virus which could come out. 
because the first experience, first experience worked perfectly. So they know now that okay, they can they can do they can change the whole world. That's right. So if everything is fine, yes, uh, we'll have a normal world. But going forward, you do not know because so many variants of this uh, this yes, uh, yes. COVID nineteen. And Malik every sahab, variant. Balik sahab, I will get back to you about the variants. That does we have the uh, this vaccine is good for the variant also. I know this is a question to the health professional, but I may get some answer from you. I'm going to Doctor uh, Professor Pitman. Professor Pitman, India has num more number of vaccine, and we have the less number of vaccine. And the reason you mentioned earlier that the reason you mentioned earlier that because the fear is uh, uh, built here not there so it means uh, it, uh, please allow me to say that it is possible that country like india has more democratic approach however we have the corrupt politicians here we don't have the corrupt politician but they somehow they keep people ready okay whatever the vaccine is available don't go in detail clotting not clotting and this because uh, you know in road accident in so many things people are dying so there is a possibility always that you can have something so why why do you think because of this advanced country we are having more fear than a country which is underdeveloped oh, I, i've never been to india but i'm assuming the indian people are more subservient because they they used to being uh, involved with governments that dictate a lot more <laughs> to your lifestyle now i might be wrong in that but um generally speaking i think uh, india's population are more willing to become vaccinated i think here in australia and i think dr bernard's right but when he brought the state governments up to his level all of a sudden uh, you had a lot more information and uh, as a result i think the australians have reacted to it by saying well, what is the right advice your state says this your state says that the federal government says that and i think that's caused confusion in the minds of people i don't think um the doctors intentionally did it that way i think it's the politics between labor and the conservatives uh and i think it's also about um people trying to position themselves within the next year or two for their elections instead of thinking about the common good of the people i think indian people generally um may have a better understanding and there may be a more uh universal approach over there and i think they probably hasn't brought their state governments or their state jurisdictions into the um centralized government debate over there i think the central government's probably controlled the health issue whereas here in australia it's a shared relationship and it's like all families when you share things everyone's got a different view about what they'd like to do yeah, professor pitman here uh, i think you always give very straight and honest opinion but i like more 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 in deep from your heart do you think because the, our uh, in your experience as you already mentioned that because of the two major parties they would like to feel that uh, covid will be a, a, a platform where you can make your win or you can make your lose so this is one thing does in the past you see that such kind of agenda will help the politician party to win or lose number one or do you think that they really have a fear honest fear because always every state is afraid from the public pressure because of the suing because of you know the people are coming and they say because covid was vaccine was not tested and you done and you make the decision now this is this is the time you have to be answered so i have the two part number one let me just one minute one minute huh? so i have a two part number one do you think in your past experience such topic such basis will become a really strong foundation for changing an election and the second part is that do you think also that it is not because of the fear because in advanced system there is a strong people a law in law system is strong where government can be responsible if making their wrong decision 
Uh, look, I think you're quite correct in your comments there. The Queensland government won an election on health and, and fear. I see the Premier in Victoria may lose an election over his uh, inability to handle the COVID. Um, I noticed the uh, Premier of New South Wales seems to be winning and losing depending on, on issues. And they, they're suggesting that Scott Morrison, the Prime Minister, is also struggling. And, and I think it's true that health will become the political issue here, just as in India, farming will, was an issue. And I don't think the uh, Indian government will get away from the farming issue either. So it's what's affecting people at any given time. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Indians vote according to their farming issue and the COVID. And here in Australia, um, COVID's now become, I think, a critical issue. And people will vote more on how governments have performed with COVID and uh, managed it. Uh, so it's politics and Labor's playing it and the Conservatives are playing it and that's the sad part about it is people like myself and my family are caught up in the middle of it and uh, unfortunately Dr Bernard's an American citizen so he can, he can go home as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to add anything? I'm just closing the show. Um. At the end of the day, I think what importance is no matter what you say and what you believe, it's people's health. And the honest intent of all politicians here, whether it is Premier of Queensland or it's Prime Minister Scott Morrison, is to keep everyone safe. When it comes to issues like this, it's very sensitive um, in terms of uh, political gains or losses. As, as good, hardworking citizens, honest people, I think we should get out and vaccinate ourselves so that we can open the country up. Um, we are trying to get uh, um, appointments for vaccination, though, as we discussed off the show, we are waiting for the new Madonna uh, vaccine to come through that is made in U.S. It is older people like me, and it has no side effects. So I, in, in short, I would say, yes, it's, it's a very sensitive issue. It will continue, and you hope and pray that there are no more variants of this one, so there are more dangerous consequences, and we can all deal with it. Uh, you understand the countries we come from have suffered major. Heavy price has been paid. A lot of lives have been lost, and it does good no, to no one. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bernard Malik. We was, uh, I believe that our both analysts uh, discuss a difficult uh, topic, but again, because of the past experience and invo uh, their involvement in community as well as in, in government policy and procedure uh, departments, they believe they understand it that how the things are going to be happen. And as Dr. Bernard Malik rightly mentioned, the four stages, four phases plan, uh, definitely, it is a really good plan, and uh, there is lots of positive in the plan. However, there are something which is not clear, and seems to be there is no no phase one to phase two overlap, phase two to phase three overlap, and phase three to phase four overlap, which says, or especially the target date. That's that's that. But believing that very soon, uh, because I believe that today also they 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 landed 2,000 international uh, uh, fl uh, flight. Uh, uh, peoples uh, in Queensland, similarly in other states also, I believe that's going to be increased and by the time we are expecting the international event to be a start arriving in Queensland and in other states. The reason for these topics that we would like to keep aware of our community, that how the things are going to be happen, and that with the experience of our two uh, experts, we would like to engage and find out what's going on, what inside there. It's over from Shivradi. I believe today's show ultimately give a more knowledge and basic understanding to our community. We will come back to the next Monday and bring some new topics and see what our experts are having for us. Till then, it's goodbye from Shivradi. Thank you, Pranar Malik, Mr. Pranar Malik, and thank you, Professor Pittman. Thank you, sir.